Welcome back to Geology Watch. Just hours ago, on September 13th, 2025, the ground didn't just shake. A powerful rupture tore through the Earth's crust. At approximately 12, five local time, a massive magnitude 7.4 earthquake struck off the coast of Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula. The epicenter was located on the infamous Kuril Kamchatka subduction zone, one of the most volatile and seismically active fault lines on the entire planet. The quake was powerful enough to trigger immediate tsunami alerts, forcing coastal evacuations in Russian towns like Severokurilsk and putting the entire Pacific Rim on watch. But as scientists are now confirming, this earthquake is not a new isolated event. The data is clear. This is the largest, most violent delayed aftershock of the colossal magnitude 8.8 .8 superquake that ruptured this exact same region just two months ago in July of 2025. This isn't a new disaster. It is the continuation of a much larger one. The fault is unraveling and the danger is not over. Before we explore the details of this developing threat, if you find these geological updates critical, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to Geology Watch. The initial quake today was a classic, violent, megathrust event. It struck on the boundary where the massive Pacific plate dives beneath the North American plate, a deep oceanic trench that plunges over 10 zero meters deep. This specific plate is one of the oldest and coldest subducting plates on Earth, meaning it can lock tightly and build enormous stress. Today, a segment approximately 100 kilometers long suddenly snapped slipping by several meters in an instant. This violent displacement of the seafloor immediately shoved a column of water upwards, generating tsunami waves aimed at coastal communities like Severokurilsk, a town with a tragic history of being destroyed by tsunamis. But this fault system is not a single line. It is a colossal, interconnected chain of segments that stretches thousands of miles from Japan past Kamchatka, and all the way across the ocean to Alaska. When a large segment of a fault ruptures, as this M7.7 segment just did, it doesn't just relieve pressure, it stops at a boundary, dumping all of its accumulated stress onto the next segment down the line. This is a precise, measurable process known in seismology as Coulomb stress transfer. An earthquake changes the stress field in the surrounding crust. While it relieves stress where it ruptured, it simultaneously increases the stress on adjacent, locked portions of the fault, pushing them closer to their own failure point. And that is exactly what has scientists scrambling right now. This rupture has just transferred an immense load of stress eastward, directly onto one of the most dangerous seismic gaps on the planet, the Aleutian Megathrust Fault. For decades, geologists have been warning about the Aleutian Gap, a specific section of the subduction zone south of Alaska's Aleutian Islands that has remained eerily silent. It is locked, building unimaginable stress, and it is overdue for a catastrophic magnitude 9 plus earthquake. To understand why this gap is so terrifying, we have to look at its history. During the 20th century, almost the entire rest of the Aleutian fault line ruptured in a series of colossal quakes. A magnitude 8.6 quake hit in 1,957. A magnitude 9.2, the second largest quake in recorded history, struck near Anchorage in 1,964. Another magnitude 8.7 quake hit in 1,965. But the section known as the Aleutian Seismic Gap failed to break. It has remained locked solid while the sections on either side of it have released their tension. It is now the single most prominent stress-loaded segment in the entire Northern Pacific. This M7.4 Kamchatka quake just acted like a hammer blow at the far end of this locked fault. It has loaded the trigger. The implications of this are terrifying. A magnitude 7.4 quake, while destructive, is a regional event. A magnitude 9 quake is over 90 times stronger. A full rupture of the locked Aleutian Gap would displace the entire Northern Pacific Ocean it would generate a catastrophic tsunami, far larger than what we are seeing in Russia today. This would not be a local wave. It would be a teletsunami, a basin-wide event capable of crossing the entire ocean. Because of the specific orientation of the Aleutian Fault, the primary force of the tsunami would be directed southeast. 
This makes it a uniquely North American threat. The first waves would strike Hawaii in under five hours. The wave train would then continue onward, inundating the coastlines of California, Oregon, and Washington just hours later with devastating force. This event has the potential to cause a tsunami on the U.S. West Coast, comparable to the 2004 Indian Ocean or 2011 Japan events. The data from this M7.4 quake is more than just a report. It's a critical new piece of data. For geoscientists, this event is a large-scale experiment. It is providing invaluable information on how stress propagates across this specific plate boundary, allowing them to refine models for an Aleutian rupture. In other words, this wasn't just another earthquake. It was a clear and present warning. What we are witnessing is a planetary chain reaction. The silent, relentless creep of the Pacific plate has finally resulted in a violent snap off the coast of Russia. This snap has now pushed that energy onto the already strained boundary of North America. Imagine the entire fault system as a rusted, weakening chain. Today, one of the links just broke. The rest of the chain is now holding a load it was never meant to bear. This event proves, once again, that the Earth is a deeply interconnected system. An earthquake on one side of the Pacific is not an isolated story. It is a direct warning to the other. If this analysis gave you a new perspective on our planet's hidden forces, please like this video and subscribe to Geology Watch. Join us as we continue to monitor this situation and explore the incredible forces shaping the only world we call home.